Hallelujah. Faith in action. Good morning and welcome for those of you in the house of God this morning and welcome for those of you on the live. We are in for a very special treat as you just seen him walk past the screen. We have a very special speaker, Pastor Bula in the house and our lovely guest. Thank you for joining us this morning. We love you guys so much. God bless you guys. But here in the house of God, we just want to welcome you and pray that you guys had an awesome fast. And I pray that you guys had an awesome week. Amen. It was an awesome fast and it was an amazing fast. A fast full of uh, regeneration and rejuvenation and restoration. Amen. That was a lot of R's in there and a lot of Asians in there. <laughs> Before we go into anything else, we'd like to open up in the reading of the word. We're going to go to Nehemiah 9 verse 5. It says, stand up and praise the Lord your God. Who is from everlasting to everlasting? Blessed be your glorious name, and may it be exalted above all blessing and praise. Amen. How many of you came into the house, and how many of you logged onto the live to praise the Lord our God, who is from everlasting to everlasting? Amen. Well, here at Faith in Action, we'd like to ask a simple question. Faith in Action, what time is it? It is tap time. For those of you on the live, we ask that you tag three people down below. For those of us in the house, we ask that you bring out your cell phones and text a prayer or text a word of encouragement to somebody on your contact list. You guys got 45 seconds. The timer starts now. Here we go. Hallelujah. Tap time is over. If you can stand to your feet as we get ready to praise and worship the living God. Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this day. If we haven't thanked you already, Father God, Lord Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to step into your house and bring forth our daily life, God of praise, and our daily life of worship, my God. Lord Jesus, we thank you for filling this sanctuary and our homes and our lives with your spirit, my God. Lord Jesus, we've come to have nothing but church, and we've come to praise you like we've never praised you before. Father God, Lord, I ask that you speak through the messenger this morning, Pastor Bula, and use him, Lord, as he is your willing vessel this morning, Lord. Allow us to come with open hearts, Father, and open minds and open souls, ready to apply your word that is spoken today, Father God. Lord, we dedicate this service to you and to you alone, my God, for your glory. We love you so much, Jesus. Jesus, and we pray, amen. How many of you, I mean, this song is a little, it's not old, old, but this song is a little bit older. It's a song that we sang when we were kids. And, and it's pretty much saying, I never, as a kid, I never really realized what this song was saying. But this song is, I'm trading my sorrows, I'm trading all my shame, and I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading it for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading all the sickness in my body. I'm trading my pain, and I'm laying it down at the altar for the joy of the Lord. How many of you ready to trade it for the joy of the Lord this morning? Amen. Here we go. Here we go. I'm trading my, I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying it down. 
for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my day. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. One more time. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my sin. For the joy of the Lord, I'm trading my sin. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying it down. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Say yes. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Come on, to the top. Say. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm trading my shame. For the joy of the Lord, I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm trading my pain. Lord, I'm laying it down. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. Come on, you know this part. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Say yes. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. One more time. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Give me just a voice. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. I am pressed, I am pressed, but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned. Shut down, but not be sure. I am blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure. His joy is gonna be my shame. Though the sorrow may last through the night, joy comes in the morning. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my day. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my sickness. Trading my pain. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying it down. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, somebody receive it this morning. Yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. I am pressed. I am pressed, but not crushed. Persecuted, not abandoned. Shut down, but not be shut. I am blessed beyond the curse, for His promise will endure, and His joy is gonna be my share. Though the sorrow may last through the night, the joy comes in the morning. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying it down, laying it down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading all my sickness. I'm trading my sickness. Trading all my pain. I'm trading my pain. I'm flipping it down. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. Here we go, last time. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. 
Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Say amen. 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 Here you go. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning and let the joy be over your life. We ask that you get out of your seats and welcome somebody in the house of the Lord this morning. Once again, get out of your seat, greet somebody, and welcome somebody in the house of the Lord. And tell them how good it is to see them in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Sing verse 2 one more time. When the sky was silent in the void of the night, our God is an awesome God. He spoke into the darkness and then created light. Our God is an awesome God. Judgment and wrath, He poured out of Sodom. Mercy and grace, He gave us at the cross. I hope that you have not too. Forgotten. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wings. The power and love our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wings. So 
Somebody give our God, who is an awesome God, a hand clap of praise this morning. And I'd like to call up Miss Minister Abel as he prepares our hearts for giving of tithe and offering. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our God is an awesome God. Amen. And within saying that, he's given us everything. Amen. And all he asks is a portion. Just a small portion, amen? We know that tithes are a tenth of our income that we give back to God. We bring it. We bring it to him. We don't give it. We don't have that kind of authority. He gives to us. We bring back to him, amen? Our offerings are gifts on top of what he has given us already, amen? Those are for helping the poor, the sick. Moving forward, his church into our dark and dying world. Amen? God asks us one thing in 2 Corinthians 9, 7. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen? Just think about it. How much God has given you? Amen? For some of us, he's given us life above life and above life and above life amen Amen. for some of us he's given us a job for some of us he's given us a family that we can go to and get comforted and be raised up in the church amen so how much more easy is is it for us to bring our sacrifices to him cheerfully Amen? amen hallelujah if you're online and you need to give if you feel to bring We'll reach at www.faithinactionhawaii.church. And we appreciate God and everything that he has done for us. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for you giving to us all. Your son who gave his life to save us, who rose again on the third day to give us life and life in more abundantly. Bless those that had to bring and bless those that couldn't bring that wanted to bring, Lord. We thank you for all these blessings that you bestow on us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How many of you know that he is God all by himself? Amen. He doesn't need us. He is God all by himself. Amen. Mighty God, I bless your name. Holy One, I worship you. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. Mighty God, mighty God, I bless your name. I worship you, cause you are God all by yourself. Cause you are God all by yourself. Say mighty God. Mighty God. I bless your name. of you, for you are God all by yourself, you are God all by yourself, say mighty God, mighty God, I bless the name, holy one. 
you are God all by yourself. Oh, you are God. You are God all by yourself. For who you are, for who you are, Lord, I worship you. I worship you. For who you are, I worship you. You are God all by yourself. Oh, you are God. You are God all by yourself. Say age to age, age to age. Lord, you're still the same. the same in all creation. In all creation. We'll shout your name. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. Say age to age, age to age. Lord, you're still the same. You're still the same. All creation. We will shout your name. You are God of mine. Lord, you are God of mine. You are God of mine. Say, mighty God, mighty God, I bless your name. Lord, you are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. Mighty God, mighty God, I bless your name. Holy One, I worship you. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. Age to age, age to age, you're still the same in all creation. We'll shout your name. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. For who you are, I bless your name. I bless your name. For who you are, who you are, I worship you. You are God all by yourself. Lord, you are God all by. You are God all by yourself. Say, mighty God, mighty God, Lord, I bless your name. I bless your name, Holy One. Lord, I worship. You are God of my yourself. But you are God of my. You are God of my yourself. For who you are, for who you are, I bless your name. For who you are, I worship you. You are God all by yourself. 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 And I am desperate for your touch, a glimpse of heaven for the glory of your Son. In a moment you 
can turn my life around forever to be found in you and I am reaching out to find there's nothing greater than your love that holds my life your grace and mercy that have saved me by your blood has swept away my shame oh lord love is life My only desire to worship at your feet. So let this fire consume my life. Let your love take me deeper. Draw me closer to where you all I want is more of you. When you call, I will follow. At the cross, I surrender. Oh, Jesus, I belong to you. And I am desperate for your touch, a glimpse of heaven for the glory of your Son. In a moment you can turn my life around, forever to be found in you. And I am reaching out to find There's nothing greater than the love that holds my life Your grace and mercy that have saved me by your blood And swept away my shame, oh Lord To love is like fire Draw me closer to where you are. All I want is more of you. When you call, I will follow. At the cross, I surrender. Oh, Jesus, I belong to you. This ain't no ordinary worship. This ain't no ordinary song. The God I serve is greater than the ordinary. So I'ma give him all I have in this moment. This ain't no ordinary worship. This ain't no ordinary song. The God I serve is greater than the ordinary. So I'ma give him all I have. 
love in this moment. Oh, this ain't no ordinary. This ain't no ordinary worship. This ain't no ordinary song. This ain't no ordinary song. The God of service is greater than the ordinary. So I'ma give him all I have in this moment. Come on, one more time, say This ain't no ordinary worship. This ain't no ordinary song. The God of service greater than the ordinary. So I'ma give him all I have in this moment. Come on, lift your hands and say this ain't no ordinary no ordinary worship. Lord, this ain't no ordinary song. No ordinary song. The God of service greater than the ordinary. So I'ma give him all I have in this moment. Let the worship birds arise. Let the sons and the daughters sing. I'm surrendering my all. I'm surrendered to the King. Oh, let the worship birds, let the worship birds arise. Let the sons and the daughters sing. I'm surrendering my all. I'm surrendered to the King. Let the worshipers arise. Let the sons and the daughters sing. I'm surrendering my all. I'm surrendered to the King. Let the worshipers arise. Let the sons and the daughters sing. I'm surrendering my all. I'm surrendered to the King. Come on, one more time. Just if your hearts this morning. Let the worshipers arise. Let the sons and the daughters sing. I'm surrendering my all. I'm surrendered to the King. Father, Lord Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your spirit, my God. Lord Jesus, we thank you for restoration, my God. Lord, we thank you for repentance, my God. Lord, we thank you for your healing power, Father God. Lord, once again, I ask that you speak through your messenger this morning, Pastor Bula. Anoint him, Father God, and let no attack of the enemy, Father, come against him, Lord. Your word this morning shall prosper, my God. Lord Jesus, we are ready to receive your word. Lord, we love you so much and we praise you, Jesus, and we pray, amen and amen. And I'd like to call upon a very special friend and actually family to Faith in Action, Pastor Bula, as he will be bringing forth the word this morning. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. amen, amen. Hallelujah. Please take your seat. Don't mind this hobbling pastor. Three weeks ago I had knee surgery, but by God's grace, I've been anywhere and back already. Anybody came expecting today? Hallelujah. I've been watching your pastors in California, and um, they better start taking a fire truck with them. There's a lot of fire running around with them. 
Either that or start wearing an asbestos suit because, um, you know what's so beautiful is when you have ministers and pastors that are anointed and they go into an area that I would call dry bones and you see people come to life. That's what ministry is all about. And they're doing a wonderful job. I don't plan to be before you too long, at least not till dinner. <laughs> so excited to see everyone here and online. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All thanks be to God who was and is and is to come and glory to the Lamb. You see, we got to get excited, folks. Whenever you hear me, I always say, whenever I'm going to speak, come expecting. Come expecting. When you walk through the doors of any sanctuary, come expecting. And there's a reason I say that. There's a lot of people right now cheering for um, 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 the, the, the Lakers against the, the, the Wonder. I don't even know. There's a football game, I think, or something going on. But I want to tell you, I said, I don't, as you can tell, I don't follow football. And if I did, I'd only want the last 90 seconds because that's the only ones that count. But um, there's a lot of people cheering on these two football teams. And that makes me sad because they could be in a house of the Lord right now. Receiving a word that could heal somebody in their family. That could save their soul that's going to a burning hell. But yet they want to sit in front of a TV and yell about millionaires playing against millionaires whom they don't even know. But when they get all excited just seeing one team beat another team. Well, I come by to tell you, and I don't know... I'm just going to throw this out. There might be a few Dallas Cowboy fans out there. Don't worry, I'm praying for you. There might be a, a, a few 49er fans. We, Hawaii, we like, yeah, yeah. I pray for them too. And um, you see, and the reason is because I, I, I'll tell you the team I belong to. And I know I've got a few teammates in this house tonight. I belong to Team Jesus. And the reason I say that, now, now the 49ers, they consider themselves winners. And, of course, the Cowboys, I don't know, they think they're winners too. But they've all lost the game. Somewhere in the history of their franchise, they lost something along the way. I checked my Bible, Team Jesus, of course, and um, he, we haven't lost. And I came by to tell somebody today, we're not losing. And I came by to remind you, we ain't going to lose. So if you really want to say you want to belong to a winning team, I don't know what you're waiting for. You should be in the house because we are the winning team, Team Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You see, with church, when we come with that expectation... That breeds an anticipation when we come to the house of the Lord. And then that creates the participation, like we just had with praise and worship. And then now you're going to see the manifestation from heaven and the demonstration. But it all starts with that expectation. If you're going to come in here with your arms crossed, say, well, feed me, teach me, bless me. And you turn that and get out because that's not what's going to happen. We come in, it's a service where we participate, worshiping our Lord. You know, Jesus wasn't standing on the side of the cross with his arms folded. He actually had his arms outstretched, getting beat and hanging on a cross. So I think he gave us his full participation. And the least we can do as a body of Christ is fully participate with our Lord and Savior today. Can I get an amen? amen. This is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice in it. We shall enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. We should have been jacked up before we walked up those steps. I'm just jacked up because I did walk up those steps. But that's a whole other story. We're going to pray for healing later. But where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And he who the sun sets free is free indeed. It's an honor and a privilege, family, to be here today. And I know our pastors are in California doing a mighty work. But the word of the Lord shall still go forth. Can I get an amen? amen. I want to thank God for the breath in my lungs this morning, waking me in my right mind, allowing me to get dressed while my wife is in Kauai. I put matching shirt and pants on, so I'm all right. And a very big mahalo to our pastors for this house. Thank the leadership and all those that have attended today for making the time to come and worship our Lord. And I want to say thank you to our friends and my dear brother, Pastor Jeffrey Allen, his beautiful bride right here. They came all the way from Waianae. <laughs> I say that funnily. <laughs> but I also want to give a shout out to my wingless angel. She sends her love. She's in Kauai closing up some meetings for work. And um, that she'll be home this afternoon. And <clears throat> I want to remind you guys that here at Faith in Action, you're well fed. Now, don't go down and start looking at your old poo and go, yeah, I know I'm well fed. No. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to explain something. that Because I know this book, this, this one book, that has 66 books in it, that has 1,187 chapters in it, and 300, 1,102 verses in it. It's the approved, the authorized, the applicable, the infallible, the inerrant and the inspired word of the Lord. Can I get an amen? amen? 
The reason there's so many verses in the Bible, when you go through adversity, just add a verse to it. That'll help you out in the long run. So today I want to do a little preaching. I want to do a little teaching, but I'm going to do a whole lot of reaching today. Because I want to reach out to your spirit man today. I want your spirit man to get up and jump today. I want your spirit man to get excited today. I want your spirit man to get angry at me today. I want your spirit man to get motive. Can I get an amen, church? See, at the end of service, please, and I don't mean this, I don't mean this in a negative way, but in, in, in a way that you might understand. I don't want to hear someone when I get through with service say, well, pastor, I enjoyed your sermon today. Because if I've delivered the word as the Lord has instructed me, my word today is going to be about conviction, confession, and repentance everywhere. There should be no enjoyment in that because I am trying to tell you there's going to be friction on how you're living and how you should be living. There's nothing to enjoy in this sermon because I want to confront you with everything that is keeping you from living in the full blessings that God has for you. Am I preaching right, church? In fact, let me just narrow it down. The reason you're not being blessed in the fullest, in whatever area of your life, comes down to one word, sin. Let me say that again for the boys in the back. The reason you're not living the fullest life with the fullest blessings from the Lord is the sin that's still in your life. Now, I know it got real quiet there, but that's okay. I'm going to keep moving on. On Sunday, church, we put on our good clothes. We sit all prim and proper in the chair. We sing all the words to the songs. We shout out a hallelujah and a few amens for good measure. But listen and listen good. Church, do we know him? Do we know him? I'm talking to you. Do we know him? Are we serving him? Are we really serving him? Is he really first in our lives? Is God really? Can you look at me and say, God, no, God is absolutely first. In my I'll have to tell you, take a seat. We're going to do some counseling. You see, he says, I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. The commandments are not suggestions. He said, you shall have no other God. No other God. Career. No other God, golf. No other God, shopping. No other God, Netflix. No other God, children. No other God, spouse. No other God, gym membership. No other God before me. In Matthew 6.33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So once again, church, don't raise your hand, but I'm just giving you something to chew on later. Is God really first in your life? Only you and God know that answer. Am I right, church? Because I know that when God is glorified and Jesus is magnified and the saints are edified, the enemy is terrified. Happy New Year's in order. It's 2024, almost February. Tr translate that into whoosh. Where did January go? Time waits for no one, guys. Tomorrow's promise to no one. But have you noticed at the start of the year, everyone wants that catchy phrase, that catch-all phrase? You know, that one-liner that will make you drop the mic on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and TikTok. They want that one phrase that's going to make them famous. You know, pastors are guilty of that, too. Some claiming they heard from the Lord, praise them. Others claiming they heard their wife, praise them, too. But I'm trying to explain something. What I'm going to give you is what I see as a problem and what as I see as a solution and a lot of pastors will do that from the pulpit. We've got a problem, and here's the answer. But I'm going to do something a little different today. I'm going to give you the process to the solution. Can I get an amen? You're going to leave here with knowledge that has not been shared before. And it's, I, I've spoken with a few apostles and other pastors, and they said, where did you get that? I said, from God. I said, wow. But as I mentioned earlier, I'm a pretty basic guy. What you see is what you get. I was young once, but now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor have I seen their seed begging for bread. With all the technology and modernization around this, sometimes it's one of those times. It's like you look, we as the body of Christ, we need to get back to the basics. We need to get back to the foundation of the instructions given to us by God and God alone. See, in John 1, 1, it tells us, guys, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And when you drop, th- drop down to verse 14 in John chapter 1, it reads, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the follow- Father, full of grace and truth. Sometimes we've got to get back to the beginning, church. We've got to get back to before the arguing, before the bickering, before the gossiping, before the lying, before the drinking, stinking thinking. And when I say we get back to the beginning, not of that relationship, we get back to the beginning of the word of God. Would you agree with me, church, that we're living in perilous times right now? Does it seem like violence is at all-time high in all of our neighborhoods? Does it feel like everyone's stress level is on edge? Prices are skyrocketing. It's like we're living in a pressure cooker right now, church. And this post-COVID season is showing us how far we step back because of COVID. You know, as evidenced in my title for today, people need the Lord. It's real basic. There's a great song my brother, Pastor Keith Ryder, used to sing before he got promoted to glory. And uh, it's people need the Lord. And I've got Bible for you today. Imagine that. Turn, if you have your swords, and I know that you do, to the New Testament in the first book, chapter Matthew chapter 28, 16 through 20. You'll notice this is called the Great Commission. And it reads, then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Say, but some doubted. doubted. Say, but some doubted. doubted. Say, some doubted. doubted. Put that in your back pocket. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. This is a direct command from Jesus to all of us also. But I wanted to highlight verse 17 where it reads, When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Did you get that? These were his disciples. These men comprised his inner circle. These men were his homies, his boys, his closest friends. But it says, but some doubted. The disciples doubted Jesus. Nobody here today, but I came by to tell you, if there are any times when you have doubted God, that's okay. It's okay. Even the disciples did, and they had a much closer relationship than you do. But here's the point. Even though they had their doubts, they still worshiped Jesus. They still followed Jesus. And they still obeyed Jesus. You know what? Can we bring a chair up? I'm going to preach off of this table because my leg is going out on me. Sorry about that. I was preaching in uh, (laughs) Los Angeles, more closely, Compton, California last week. And uh, before that, I was in Mexico. Yeah, I'm going to preach right on the side. Perfect. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Mr. Lord. Since you guys sitting down, I'm going to sit down. <laughs> All right. Now I know how Pastor Guy feels. A couple of deal. Okay. So, <coughs> where we go? Okay. So, and they obey Jesus. So, even though they had their doubts, they still worshiped him. They still followed him. And they still obeyed him. You can move the altar down. This is good. It allows me to say this. Don't let the enemy use your doubts that you have to separate you from Jesus. Don't make the fish bigger than it is. The disciples doubted Jesus, but they still followed him. The disciples doubted Jesus, they still worshipped him. The disciples doubted Jesus, but they still obeyed him. See, that's kind of like what I call, sidebar, file 19 Jesus. When I go to heaven, I get plenty of questions. That's in my file 19. But I'm not going to let those questions stop me from praising my God. I'm not going to let those questions stop me from worshiping my God. I'm not going to let the enemy use that against me to stop me doing what God wants me to do. Because that's exactly what the devil wants to do. The devil wants to distract you, to delay you, 
to destroy you. Oh, I was on my way to church, but I didn't give one ramen. What should I give one ramen for? You'd have to church. Everyone's going to eat. Yeah, we haven't missed a meal in 14 years. One won't hurt you. It's got to fast. People say, Pastor, do you fast? I said, yeah, between every meal. You, you, you'll get there by the time you hit McDonald's. <laughs> and I don't know why they call it fast, because ain't nothing fast about it. <laughs> you try day five, it's going real slow. But that's all right. Praise the Lord. So... You know, and the enemy tells you in John 10, 10, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly. Church, God doesn't want you to just survive. God wants you to thrive. Why? Easy answer. How can you bless somebody if you're scraping? How can you be a blessing if you're still stressing? Come on. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. God doesn't want you to just get by. He wants you to thrive. He wants you to be an example. You're blessed to be a blessing. Sidebar and blessings. A lot of times, and you could be a new believer, a young believer, all these blessings start coming. And it's like you get your paper Dixie cup right here, and you're filling them up. That's all your blessings. You go, oh, my blessings, my blessings, my blessings, my blessings. And you're holding the Dixie cup. And the mature believer, the one that's been through a, a few battles and has come out and God's delivered them, they're holding a colander. And the blessings are coming through the colander, and they keep flowing. But you know what? God's got to keep blessing them because it keeps going through. So if you can hold water in a colander, two things. One. Thank God. And two, call me. I want to make that video because we'll go viral on YouTube because you're stopping water in the colander. But you see, when you get to it, it's like for those of us that can remember when McDonald's came on the markets, for some of us, McDonald's has always been. But there was a time before McDonald's didn't exist. So th where am I going there? No, I'm not talking about the French fries. I'm talking about the straws because you would have your regular straw. But the first time you hit with McDonald's straw, you was gagging because you're getting about three gallons of soda down your throat on the first gulp, right? That's how big so they can increase your volume. That's God. God will bless more through you than he can to you. So if you want to just hold on to your blessings, that's it, good, but that's all you're going to get. But if you want to live a life of Christ, keep blessing others. Don't stop. We are blessed to bless others. That's kingdom living and a kingdom mindset. And you're going to be, because God says, I will never leave you or forsake you. He said that. See, when we pray, we pray the word back to God that kind of stimulates him a little bit. Then we talk about the ascension and descensions of the angels. They're, living, they're, they're commanded by God. How does God command them? Because God hears the word that we pray to him because we're calling God out. Lord, you said no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Oh, what they said, don't proceed? Yeah. Uh, God's going to command the angels. You can't command the angel unless you name one of your kids angel, but you're going to command those angels up there. You know, God will always be the supreme. God's sitting high and looking low as we speak. Back to the Great Commission so we get out before dinner. So I like preaching on a chair. I'm comfy now. Oh, <laughs> Lynn, if you watch a money boss. <laughs> but anyway, um, <laughs> God heal me. Um, you know, as I said, when we're talking about the Great Commission, it starts with the letter C. I mean, you and come on, Pastor. We all went to school. I know you went to school. I'm just, I'm just reminding you. Because it's not called the Great Omission. It's called the Great Commission. Which means that it's not only for the pastor, the apostle, the elder, the deacon, the ministry leader, or any of the title that pops up today, every week there's new positions and titles in the church. I just can't keep up with them. But the Great Commission is for you and me. Well, let me qualify them. If you're scripture speaking, tongue talking, praise bumping, blood bought, bond serving for Jesus Christ, then it applies to you also. And for those of you that haven't given your life to the Lord, we'll give you an opportunity later. You can join the club. But there's something to hold on to because if God says it, that settles it. And our lives become very, very easy. As we know, God is not looking for intelligence. God is looking for obedience. There's a lot of people with degrees on a wall that don't live Bible. I don't care if you can quote me the Old Testament, New Testament. Live Bible. Stop quoting Bible. And, and speak in English. I don't need Aramaic. I don't know what that means. A lot of times guys get up behind the pulpit. All of a sudden they got to speak Latin and Greek to me. I say, what happened to English? I got a problem. English and pigeon. Let's give it to English. But it's like, instead of, you know, you can, we can all as believers get so buried in theological disciplines and not live Bible. I think God would rather have us just live the scriptures out. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, and it's called the Great Commission. But we have to remember that people need the Lord. And that's including family and friends, too. Yeah. You know, our greatest mission field is three steps away from the hallway in our house. I mean, India is a great place. Africa is a great place. But our own homes is a great mission field. You know, sometimes the, the, the shortest distance is the hardest distance. Oh, but they, they know who I was. They know what I did. Exactly. Past tense. Your new creation. Let them show the glory of the Lord. If they, 
if you're so if you're so if you're so holy by now, they should want to be saved by seeing the change in your life, right? <laughs> well, what you do when you're not at church? That's a whole other message. But anyway, I want to. Um, <clears throat> he's looking for obedience because God says in John chapter 14 and 15 through 18, He says, "If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father, and He will give you another Helper, woo, that He may be with you forever. The Helper is the Spirit of Truth." Whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I am coming to you. A lot of things going on here besides obedience. We're learning about the advocate, the helper, the Holy Spirit that resides in each and every one of us. Thank you, Jesus. That should inspire us even more to continue to share the good news of the gospel. Knowing that each and every one of us have the Holy Spirit residing in us. And the wonderful thing about that is that Jesus has told us he will never leave us nor forsake us. See, a lot of times we base our relationship with God based on our earthly relationships. Error. Because everybody here on earth is going to bail on you. Even in your worst of worst, God will never bail on you. Never. Never. When he says never, he means never. never. Down here, never means that until next week maybe. You know, that's why we always have to keep our eyes focused on him. So <clears throat> knowing that people need the Lord, I wanted to, the other half of my message was titled, Is There a Jonah in the House? Jonah's a great story. We're going to be in Jonah for a little bit today. Because when I say, is there a Jonah in the house, they start looking at name tags. and Where did Jonah go? No, no, we, <laughs> stick with me. I'm going to explain this. Because we are all like Jonah at some point in our life. Each and every one of us. Ain't nobody in this room that ain't like Jonah. But here is someone who did not run to God, but he ran from God from the very beginning. Am I talking to anyone this morning? But there's so many lessons to be learned and applied to our lives. As I was preparing this message, I could see a lot of Jonah in myself. And it revealed to me how much God prepares us, how much God protects us, and how much God loves us. And it's a short, it's a short read, so we're going to open our Bibles to Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. It reads, The word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry out against it, because their wickedness, say their wickedness, say their wickedness, say it like we mean it, their wickedness, thank you, has come up before me. This is the Lord speaking to Jonah. So I guess God was reading the Star Advertiser, and he read about Nineveh. So he said, hey, Jonah, go check out Nineveh. They're being bad. Verse 3 says, but Jonah got up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. See, at this point, Jonah doesn't know that God is the hide-and-go-seek champion of all time of the world. When you run around and go hide in your closet, he's like the softball coach on a white fight gun in bucket. What? What? What are you doing? I'm already here. Let's go out of the closet. Come on. You'll get that by the time he hit Burger King. So he went down to Joppa, found a ship that was going to Tarshish, paid the fare, boarded it, to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. Clearly the stage has been set in the very first verse that the voice of the Lord spoke to Jonah. wasn't a question, it wasn't a suggestion, but it was a command. Not only that, but God explained that their wickedness had come up before me. Now when we read of their wickedness of Nineveh, you're like me, you tell yourself, ah, it must have been a, that must have been a bad place. Yeah, we kind of gloss over it and read ahead. However, I had to do a little digging because it kind of got me going, Wow, for that to come up in front of God, I wonder what they were doing. It was wild. Because historians reveal that Nineveh was a big, big city and the center of commerce and very well established at that time. It is also the wicked city that embodied God's wrath because the sins of Nineveh, as mentioned in the Bible, were numerous and severe. So located in the ancient Near East, Nineveh was the capital of the Assyrian Empire and it was known for its wealth, for its power, its military might, but also for its wickedness and violence. The Assyrian Empire was known for its brutality and oppression of other nations, suggesting a lack of respect for the lives and rights of human beings. It was well known for its cruelty. The kings and rulers of Nineveh tormented its nation. They used to murder people and scatter the bodies all over the ground. They even used the corpses' heads to make pyramids out of them in the city. To me, that's pretty wicked. I read that. I was like, woo. But, you know, even in the darkest light, 
even in the even in the I'm sorry, even in the darkest of places, the light of Christ shall shine through. I mean, they're taking the heads, the the skeleton heads, the skulls. They're making pyramids, like how we make charcoal briquettes when we're making the bocce and we like the pyro. They're putting people's heads anyway. That's a wicked place. It's pretty graphic. But you see, but God needs a willing vessel, but that wasn't Jonah. Because he was on a ship that was going, as I would say, diametrically opposed. If God was here, he was there. He was, he was nowhere to be found. The direct opposite from where God wanted him to be. And here's a tidbit. The current day location of Nineveh is Mosul, Iraq. <laughs> Do some research. <laughs> Whoa. Let's keep going. We know the story is Jonah's running from God. He doesn't know any better. And at his request, he tells the crew, hey, the reason we're in this bad, bad storm, he's coming after me. Just toss me over the boat. You guys going to live, but he's going to come get me. So they did that. But here's what's so incredible. At the precise instant in the storm, when the crew tossed Jonah over the edge of the boat, it says that a huge, it said huge, huge, said huge fish swallowed him. The Lord had designated a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the stomach of the fish for three days and three nights. And this is the first recorded history of the world's first ever big gulp. 7-Eleven, <laughs> they should have caught this. I would put, I'd be putting fishes on our cups right now. But anyway, maybe not. So for, now here we got to imagine Jonah. So now Jonah, the fish got him. Jonah's in the belly of the fish. Sitting in the belly, get crabs running on his feet. He gets seaweed, limo tangled all around his head. It's like taking a bath in patisse at this moment. Okay, I got a few Filipinos here. My wife would be proud. And, um, but it's got to be n nothing short of horrible. I mean, it's got to stink. I mean, you're talking about dead fish, crabs, seaweed, patisse. I mean, but we get to see that the Lord is still in control. See, Jonah, while in the depths of the ocean, in the belly of the great fish, starts to do something he should have been doing from the very beginning. He started to seek the Lord in prayer. Let me say that again for the boys in the back. He started to seek the Lord in prayer. Wow. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 2 in the book of Jonah says, Then Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from the fish's belly. And he said, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction. And he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. Now here's a point to ponder even from the belly of a big fish the lord heard jonah's prayer why you say that pastor i'm not talking to anybody but i'm talking to somebody this morning no matter where you are no matter how dark your situation i believe that the god we serve can hear your prayers too anytime and all the time but you know this he will answer them on his time not your time. You could say that God had gotten Jonah's attention. And when I'm in prison ministry, I always explain to my brothers and sisters on that side of the fence, God will put a storm in your life not to blow you off course, but to blow you on course. See, many people say, well, Jonah, he, he was in a storm. He got, no, no, he wasn't listening to God. God had to do that to blow him back on course. Am I talking to anyone today? Look back in your life, my brothers and my sisters, when your life was upside down, where you felt everything was out of control, and then all of a sudden it made sense, and you could see God's hand in everything. As we follow Jonah in chapter 3, it reads, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, <laughs> saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. Verse 3 in chapter 3 says, So Jonah arose, and he went to Nineveh, According to the word of the Lord. Now, Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three-day three day journey in extent. So it took him three days to go from one side to the other side. Verse 4 reads, And Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk, when he cried out and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So now Jonah's finally being obedient to the Lord, right? And it's a question to think about. Was Jonah being obedient, or had he been disobedient? See, delayed obedience is still disobedience. Let me, let me make it, let me explain it this way. Many of us, we have kids. Saturday morning comes, 8 o'clock, you wake up. You lean your head in the door, say, hey, clean the room. Okay, I get them. Nothing happens. 
11 o'clock, you lean your head back in the same room. Eh. I say, clean the room. I get them. Okay. 2 o'clock comes around. Eh. I say, clean the room. Nothing. 4 o'clock. That's it. You don't clean the room, I'm going to ground you. Oh, all of a sudden, a tornado hits the room. Get on. Hurricane going on inside that place. Everything gets all cleaned up. And all of a sudden, your son or your daughter sits next to you in the couch and says, Hey, Pops, how you doing? <laughs> what you want? <laughs> so now, did the room get clean? Yeah, it got clean. But it didn't get cleaned at the time it was told to be clean. Delayed obedience is still disobedience. Because a lot of times you say, Well, Lord, I got around to it. Ah, I got around to it. Sometimes we like to play deaf ear when the Lord talks to us. Nobody here, but probably that church over in, uh, in, in Kauai, maybe. I'm not sure. But it's just, um, let's continue to read about Nineveh as the Lord reveals himself more to the people. So the people of Nineveh, they believed God. They proclaimed the fast, put on the sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. Verse 6 says, and then word came to the king of Nineveh. He arose from his throne and laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth and ashes, and seven says, and he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout the Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink water. Verse 8, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily, not the kind, oh, Lord, no, cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from their evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Verse 9 says, who can tell God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not perish? <laughs> Verse 10, then God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Say, and he did not do it. Say, he did not do it. What a miracle, church. An entire city, some 120,000 people in number, would you agree that would be a pretty good time to have a hallelujah party? Hallelujah. When was the last time we converted 120,000 people to the Lord in two days? Oh, but Jonah, 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 Jonah. Jonah's having a problem. Jonah is displeased. He's really upset. Now he becomes angry at God. It reads on that he says, he prayed to the Lord and said, Ah, Lord, was not this what I said when I was still in my country therefore i fled to tarshish for i know that you are a gracious and merciful god slow to anger and abundant loving kindness one who relents from doing harm therefore now O lord please take my life from me for it is better for me to die than to live yeah let's be clear nineveh has converted to has been converted to follow god upon jonah's warning god does not destroy them and forgives him and now Jonah is having a pity party and wants to die. Maybe this is where we get the term, save the drama for your mama. Because can you imagine how God is feeling right now? I just 120,000. I mean, Jonah. And so, but it gets even better in chapter 4, and we're almost done, church. Because the Lord said in verse 4, is it right for you to be angry? Verse 5, Jonah went out of the city, sat on the east side of the city, and he made himself a little shelter and sat under it in the shade so that he might see what would become of the city. The Lord God prepared a plant, made it come up over Jonah that it might be shade for his head to deliver him from his misery. So Jonah was very grateful for the plant. Verse 7, but as morning dawned, the next day God prepared a worm, and it so damaged the plant that it withered. Verse 8, and it happened... When the sun arose, that God prepared a vehement east wind, and the sun beat on Jonah's head, so now he grew faint. Then he wished death for himself and said, It is better for me to die than to live. Now Jonah's faint, he's wanting death, biggest pity party yet, and he's angry at the plant. So now God, in verse 9, says to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the plant? And he said, it is right for me to be angry, even to death. Verse 10, but the Lord said, you've had pity on the plant for which you have not labored, nor made it grow, which came up in a night and perished in a night. And should I not pity Nineveh, that great city, in which are more than 120,000 persons 
who cannot discern between their right hand and their left, and much livestock. Like Jonah, I believe that it is in our time of pure reflection that we get a true affection for God. Let me say that again. It's in times of our pure reflection. It's in that quiet time. You got the TV on, Netflix not on, the phone's not on, everything's off. Not even the praise and worship music, but it's in that quiet time. In that reflection time, that's when you're going to get the true affection for God. Because that's a time of realization when you're going to know that pit that God got you out of. You're going to know that situation that God delivered you from. You're going to know that financial crisis you were in, but God delivered you from. See, it's in the quiet still of the night you're going to realize how good God is. Because when you're outside in the world with everything going on, you don't got time for God. But it's in that quiet time that you're going to get that true affection for God. It's in the quiet moments when we think of our lives. We think what Jesus did on the cross. It reorients us. It realigns us. It gets our heads out of somewhere it shouldn't be and in the proper place. Did I say that correctly? So we're all on the same page. Thank you, Jesus. I love Jonah because Jonah's real. Jonah was stubborn. Jonah was self-centered. Jonah was selfish. Jonah was immature. I said Jonah, not Pastor Bula. Anyway, I believe all of us have a little bit of Jonah in us at some point in our walk with God. But God used Jonah's pride to prepare Jonah's mind. God used Jonah's mind to prepare for Nineveh. God used Nineveh to prepare Jonah's attitude. God used Jonah's attitude to prepare Jonah's heart. So that begs the question, why all this preparation? What is God up to? I'm glad you asked. God had one goal in mind, focused on the same thing that he's focused on you and he's focused on me. The same as Jonah is the same thing. And th that's what we have in common with Jonah. See, because think about it, guys, and maybe nobody here because you're too holy and anointed, appointed, and sanctified. But you might know somebody that might be a little stubborn, prideful, might be a little angry, might have some contempt in them, self-centered, ego. Am I talking to anyone this morning? See, God is a preparer, and on the surface you would say, yes, Lord, but here is the $64,000 answer. God was preparing his prophet. God is preparing you and me for greater things. If Jonah couldn't get through Nineveh, he's not going to get through anything else. The challenges you go through is not to overwhelm you. It's to make you understand we go to God when we have a challenge. See, because the quicker we know that God is our ultimate source, see, we don't have problems. Uh, maybe we learned that today. So people say, how's your faith? I go, my faith's unreal. Really? Yeah, do you know what faith means for me? They go, no. Forward all issues to heaven. I get a situation. Ah, God, yep, yeah, thank you. Have a good day. I'm done. Because he, he told me in his word that he will never leave us nor forsake us. You know that all blessings come from above. You know that any attack from the enemy, he's already going to be preventive. Amen. Amen. So in 1 Corinthians 2.9, it says, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. I believe we got some people in the room and in the sanctuary today and online that love the Lord. So if I could translate it and paraphrase, no scared him, he get him. No worry, beef curry. No, we're not serving beef curry for lunch. It might be something else. But the thing is, we worry about so many things that we have no control over. And what is that? Fear is not of the Lord. That's a spirit. And so, but I, in the same breath, I, I tell people, I want more Jonah in me. They go, what are you talking about? We just impound Jonah. No. I want the Jonah that makes me cry out from my darkness. See, because even though everything was upside down, he's in the belly of the fish. He still knew where to go. He still knew he had to pray. And he still knew God would answer his prayers. I want that part of Jonah in me, that no matter what the situation is, I know that if I pray to the Lord with everything God, God will hear my prayers. See, the world that we live in today, you think TikTok's going to answer you before Jesus Christ. You better watch out what God's going to do to social media. I'm telling you, we've got more lost souls on social media than we did before we had social media. God is still in control. But Jonah's a wonderful lesson because it's so like so many believers today. We all want to run away from God, but as soon as we get in trouble, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, all of a sudden, you know where he's at? If God treated us the way we treated God, oh, it's over. It's over. But he wants the best for us. He wants the very best for us. And you see, we can praise God all we want here on a Sunday, 
what you doing Monday to Saturday? Because ministry is in here. Ministry starts when we walk out that door. You know, here we just come for, put the band-aids on our cock heels and taking cracks all week. See some people we love and say, oh, we're going to couple rounds next week. feel like Max Holloway on a ninth round right now. But God's still in control. But for those of you that think church is two hours on a Sunday, you're in error. You're wrong. Don't limit the limitless one. You know, you can't control the Holy Spirit. See, but we know that the Bible tells us if we know better, we have to do better. Because if we don't, that is sin to us. And I don't know about you, but Jesus is the best thing happened in my life. Sorry, Lenny, love you a long time. Jack, my dog, I love you. But you guys know my circle is so tight, it's a straight line. You know how they say keep your circle tight? My circle is so tight, it's a straight line. God, Lenny, and the dog. It's like this. I'm sorry. If you're going to make a circle out of that, it's up to you. But I got a straight line right there. But you see, the Bible tells us that the enemy was defeated by the blood of the lamb and the word of your, and the word of your, and the word of your. We got work to do, church, and I'm not going to leave you hanging today. So I've told you the problem. We've told you the solution, but now I want to leave you with the process. Now, for many of us, if we're at the mall and you walk up to somebody and you don't know and say, and you kind of know him, but you don't know him, you're in a local style, and you go up and say, hey, let me tell you about Jesus. Oh, they make one mad dash for the door right there like they, like they owe you money or something. Because they, they're not used to that, right? So here's the solution, and it works. We're going to shout it out. Say shout. 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 I'm going to make it easy so we all understand this. And this is how we defeat the enemy. Because remember, I just told you that the scripture tells us the enemy is defeated by the blood of the lamb and the word of your. Well, we like testify, but kind of hard because nobody like, listen, well, it's, it's our presentation. So let's work on this. S is for, say, salutation. salutation. I couldn't make it say anything else. So I had to use that. Salutation is like, hey, how's it? How you doing, boo? How you doing? Hey, my sister, how you doing? It's a greeting, okay? Salutation. That's the S. What comes after S and shout? H, thank you. It's for health. You're going to tell them. Hey, you, you joined the gym or you taking vitamins? What you doing? Oh, you joined the gym. How was good to it? You're trying to create a common ground. You're trying to create a conversation. And this is how you're going to hit it with the testimony. So we talked about salutation. Greet him. Hey, brother, how are you? Long time. Hey, you still want? Oh, you can't now. Okay, good, good, good. Hey, what? You working out? Oh, I see you get guns now. <laughs> oh, good, 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 good. Then the O is for Ohana. How's your grandkids? Seven. Oh, my goodness. You need a Netflix account. What they doing over there? You know how expensive kids are? We're talking about the family. Again, you're letting them talk and get, in, get, get involved with you. And the you is for you. What you doing? You still working or you retired? You still working. Post office. Wow, what more year? They're going to make a stamp after you uh, down there. Too long already, huh? <laughs> so you get them. You're engaged in conversation. So the last thing they're going to think you're going to talk about is the next one, the T for the testimony. And you go right into it say, oh, I don't know about you, bro. I was going through some cracks. But, hey, if you get a minute, bro, I'll tell you what Jesus did for me, bro. You say you didn't, you, you disarm them from all the defense mechanisms. You didn't see, we, we saw you there. I was like, hey, how's it, how's it? A lot of times I see it for locals, right? They say, hey, how you out? I'm feeling good. Yeah, you're looking good, but you're growing back too. Yeah, you lucky bugger. <laughs> yeah, 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 how's the kids doing? Oh, the one's still up playing football now. Oh, the, the, oh yeah. <laughs> and then so you still work on your retired. You retired. Oh, you're making big bucks. I retired. Double dip, but you bugger you. <laughs> then you hit them with the testimony. <laughs> say, I don't know about you, bro. You know, I went to some cracks. You go, yeah, bro. I was worried about, yeah, you should have. But you know what Jesus did for me, boo? And you don't have to, don't go into a three-day testimony. Just tell them real quick. I just found joy in the Lord, man. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what took me out of where I was at. And my prayer is that you just know Jesus, man. And you told him your testimony. I didn't say beat him over the head with the Bible. I didn't say grab the cross around his neck and, what is this? What is this? No, you come from a position of love. You come from a position of a law. Because our job as believers is to share the good news of the gospel. You see, we sow, God grow. You know, you know farmers, when they plant the seed in the ground, two weeks later, they don't take the shovel and say, hey, seed, how are you doing? <laughs> low, low. You're not going to do that. Once you plant, we just plant and go. And if you're a farmer and you go into harvest and only 60% of the crop had bananas, do you give up? No, you work harder. Get the rest to work. Just because you fall a little short, we don't stop testifying. We don't stop glorifying God. God never stopped halfway on the cross. He gave it his all with Jesus. Amen. You know, you got you to gotta imagine and ask yourselves, how can we ask God for his best when, he give, when we give him leftovers? You know, put God first. I tell guys, put God first. It's going to get better, not worse. And to make you, uh, you know, so that's why I put the shout out. I'll be posting that out because I thought that was pretty good. Because that'll work. Would that work better than if you walk up somebody? Brother, let me tell you about Jesus. Oh, wait, stay here. Where you going? No, run away. Come on, go ahead and lock you. No. Kill him with kindness, man. It makes it a little easier because they're mandated by the Great Commission 
And all I'm trying to do is just help more people. My job is to tell people of Jesus. That's my whole job. That's my assignment in life. Just, just talk about Jesus. Because put, put it this way. Maybe, maybe, maybe somebody's online and they don't understand. If someone gave you a million dollars, what you going to do with that million dollars? You can share it? Oh, good. Thank you. B-U-L-L-A-E-A-S-T-M-E. <laughs> if you want to write a check. Um, if someone gave you the formula to cure cancer, wouldn't you want to share that formula, that medication? If, uh, make it easy, okay? Forget about the million. Forget about the cancer. If somebody bless you right outside with 4,000 malasadas, you're going to need all 4,000, you're going to share them. We're going to share it, right? Why did I do that? And we all agreed. If you're going to share all of these things we just talked about, why can't we share our testimony of Jesus with our family, friends, and our co-workers? You told me a million dollars you would. You told me cure for cancer you would. Even a malasada you would. But yet when it comes to the love of Jesus Christ, we're going to clam on. Come on, you know better, do better. Why you want to? And when I was in 2020, man, I should have died three times. They were transferring me from Queens West to Queens Hospital. So I'm going in the ambulance. It was COVID. I hadn't seen Lynn in three weeks. She comes down. So she comes around the corner. And so as they're putting me in the ambulance, and they were filming me, and I had an exhortation. And I was telling people, why do you want to wait till you are on a gurney going from hospital to hospital to exhort the Lord? Let's do it when you're in good health. And um, I gave a long exhortation. It had almost 8,000 hits on that thing. But you know what? It's going to cost you something. Because when I got, when they put me into the back of the ambulance, the attendant said, Mr. Eastman, we've got to go now. Your blood pressure is 70 over 40. I said, wow. He said, I don't know how we're going to do this. And he said, you really believe in Jesus? I said, with everything I got, he goes, really? I got the witness to the guy from Queens West to Queens. My blood pressure came back to normal, but I need a little help along the way. You see, but it's just like, Praise be to God. Praise be to God. You see, and we know believers, tomorrow's promise to no one. So we're not going to tell the person, you know, the worst thing the person can do is tell you, I don't want to hear that Jesus stuff. Say, boo, that's all good. That's all good. We spend too many time, too much time trying to save the saved. We need to go try to save the lost. Share the love of Jesus with those that haven't heard the name of Jesus. You know, um, and that's just saying we need to get out outside these doors. That's why whenever we do outreach, whenever we do those things, it's really impactful to the community. And it's great to be here on Sundays, but there's a lot of world left on Monday to Saturday. You know, and um, basically, you know, I, I enjoy so much coming to Faith in Action because there's a lot of places of worship that, that I won't go to only because I don't believe in the doctrine that they have. Because you have to preach the Bible. And in these end times, and we are in the end times, you have to preach the Bible. We have to stick with the Bible. And you hear me always say that if you can't back it up with Bible, the praise and worship team can come up now. If you can't back it up with Bible, just keep backing up. Because that's the only thing we can fall back to. Because the Bible is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. It's not about how we feel. It's about God's will. That's why you need to read the word daily. And if you don't understand what you're reading, get a version that you can't understand. Don't let the enemy get in your head and tell you you're not smart enough. You are smart enough. There's over 2,000 versions of the Bible you can look at. My hope is one day you do read King James. But up to that point, hey, use a good, in, use a Jesus book, use a good and special book. I preach in pigeon all the time. Because I, I, I'd rather have them understand something and get excited about Jesus and one day launch into an NIV, NLT, New King James Version, something. But we've got to start somewhere. We've got to meet them where they're at. So my prayer for this church is that we keep plugging along. 2024 is going to be a great year. But God is doing a work on the body of Christ. So if you're not straight and you're not right, you're going to get left because the clock is ticking. You'll get there by the time you hit LNL. But I want to thank you for your kindness and your grace. God bless each and every one of you. Remember, we're going to shine, Jesus shine. That doesn't mean we have all the answers. We just have the answer, and his name is Jesus. You've been so kind. Thank you so much. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Pastor Bula, thank you. And Lord, I ask that you restore and renew strength to your messenger this morning and continue to heal him, Father God, and continue to allow him to have a speedy recovery as well, Father God. Once again, thank you, Pastor Bula. And if you can stand to your feet as we end off in worship, amen.
Father, Lord, we thank you for your service, God. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word, my God, this morning. Lord, allow us to apply your word to our day-to-day -day lives. Father God, Lord, I pray for traveling mercies on the way home for every single one of us. Father, I pray a blessed week over each and every one of us. And once again, Father, I ask that you restore a renew strength for over Pastor Bull and also Lady Lynn and our visitors. Father God, Lord, bless them indeed, Lord, and enlarge their territories, Father God. We pray a blessing over them, Father God, as they are fulfilling your calling, Father, and fulfilling your work, my God. We thank you for them, Lord Jesus. And Father, we love you so much. This is for you, and it always will be. We love you so much, Jesus, and we pray amen and amen. I want you to look to your neighbor and say, shout, shout, salutations, health, ohana, you and your testimony. That's a good one, Pastor Bull. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Coming up with some announcements, starting with this week, Wednesday. This week, Wednesday is the last Wednesday that we will not be having Bible studies, but next week starts. Next week is the first week, the first Wednesday of February. So we'll be having our prayer night here in the house of God at 7 o'clock, and then we'll go on into having our regular Wednesday night Bible studies. Once again, no youth and junior teens this week. Um, coming up, stay connected with us. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and also YouTube. If you need a place of prayer, please join our FAA War Room where our fire starters, our church ministers, and everyone in between are standing by ready to pray for you and to pray with you. Amen. If you'd like to give your tithes and your offerings online, once again, you can go to www.faithinactionhawaii.church. Go to the website, click online giving, and click donate. Other than that, we'll be back into the house of God at 1030 a.m., ready to praise the house down. Was it anybody's birthday this past week? No birthdays this past week. Once again, Pastor Pula and also our visitors, our pastor, our family. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We love you guys so much, Pastor Pula. Thank you. And Lady Lynn, we love you too. Have a safe flight home. Other than that, God bless you. Go forward in the Lord, in the fear of the Lord, and by the power of his grace. We'll see you guys next week. God bless you guys.